So I'm Chris Ye, and I'm an author, entrepreneur, investor, and mentor. Most people will probably know me best now for my latest book, Blitzscaling, which I co-authored with my friend Reid Hoffman. I'm very interested in how scaling works around the world. So being able to participate in the program in Mexico City is a great example of how we can take those ideas and spread them. Well, there are a number of these counterintuitive rules. In fact, we have a list of nine counterintuitive rules that we include in the book. One of the first ones is launch a product that embarrasses you. It's difficult, but because if you're trying to build a product in a vacuum, you're unlikely to succeed. So that you're getting real-world feedback from actual users and actual customers, and the fastest way to do that is actually to launch early and refine and iterate, rather than try to perfect in a vacuum. Something that I warn a lot of entrepreneurs about is when you're out there, your competition might be making their product better. However, what is true that every organization, regardless of its size, regardless of its industry, can leverage the principles of blitzscaling if it wants to move faster. And the lessons of blitzscaling can help you do that. Interesting thing that you need to deal with in Latin America is language. Even though Spanish is the dominant language in the region, many people like to point out that the largest economy, Brazil, actually speaks Portuguese. And so that introduces some interesting wrinkles, right? It's almost like there's two markets as opposed to one market. So that's a challenge you have to face immediately versus in the United States where everything is basically a single English language market. The other is the level of development of financial institutions and infrastructure. And one of the things we talk about in the book is, in fact, while it is easier to blitz scale in geographies or ecosystems where the financial infra infrastructure is highly developed, in some cases you can actually build a more lasting franchise when you're blitz scaling in an area where the infrastructure isn't as well developed. So if you look in Latin America, for example, Mercado Libre has been very successful in part because it has had to take the time to build out additional things like payment systems and logistics that then give it a long-term advantage in its business. One of the things that's very challenging for an entrepreneur is that they have a day-to-day -day set of demands, and we call it fires that are burning, that they're constantly working on. And taking them out of that and letting them work on the company instead of just in the company often helps them accelerate their progress because they take a few steps back and think, wow, I really should be doing this or we really have this opportunity that we're missing. Scaling is hard, but scaling is the only way to have a massive impact. And for those entrepreneurs who are looking to change the world, to make a dent in the universe, you have to scale. We have a region that is really emerging. There's tremendous amounts of talent and people who have the kinds of experiences to begin doing it. There's so much startup activity and startup enthusiasm that scaling is the next frontier. But scaling in Latin America and building the big winners, that's exactly how Latin America is going to become a major startup hub. What you do is by building the winners, you inspire the next generation of entrepreneurs and you create a whole cadre of mentors and investors and other people who have done it before who can help the companies that come after them scale. And so having those generations of entrepreneurs who have scaled and had those experiences and can pass their knowledge on is exactly how you build a dominant, uh, a dominant startup ecosystem.